Hi there! I am sending to you today from... Actually, this is my, I sit standing in my garden, but uh, this is actually with a view over uh, landscapes. Because today I am kickstarting Green Friday. The reason why I'm doing that is because I think Black Friday can be a little bit too commercial. So I wanted to use this opportunity to give back a little bit to nature. I have a few landscape classes for you at a 25% discount. And then when you buy one of those, a 25% more uh, of that purchase will be donated directly to uh, WWF, the World Wide Fund for Nature. I really hope that you want to join me in, uh, in making a difference for your art practice, but also for nature. There you go. <laughs> and Green Friday will go from today, it's November 23rd, 2023 and uh, all the way to November 28th. You can uh, check out the link here below for the courses, a direct link for the courses. And uh, to celebrate, I want to paint a an uh, autumn tree with you. And you can see there's actually not that many leaves on the trees here. Uh, it's super windy and uh, they actually fell down a couple of days ago. But it's still inspiring and uh, I hope you will join me in painting an autumn tree. Have fun and uh, check out Green Friday. I would really love to uh, to help nature along with you. I have everything set up here. We are going to use a Canton Monval paper, a pencil size B. My paints right here is Daniel Smith. Then I have some fine liners in 01 and 002. They are there. Two brushes in size 8 and size 4. Da Vinci, Casaneo. Love those brushes. Perfect for line and wash, which is what we're going to do today. A cloth and some water. And that is all we need. I uh, found this beautiful picture from uh, Unsplash. It's Gilly Stewart who uh, took it and uh, we're going to use that as an inspiration. This is a more, a more of a summer tree, but we're going to turn it autumny because, well, right now it's November and everything is really beautiful and yellow outside. So we're going to do that. Um, and I'm going to start with a quick sketch just to kind of get that shape down. And you can start with the trunk here. And there will be branches branching out. We're not going to draw everything, of course. Just some of it. And I'm not really even sure how to draw all of these um, branches. That is just the way it is with trees. They are a mystery. I love trees. And I love how they all differ in the... Uh, and makes landscapes so personal. And I really do love to paint landscapes. I know I'm, I'm more a floral sketcher, but I often take breaks from that and just uh, paint landscapes instead and I love that and if you want to join me in painting landscapes I am um, as I said in the intro I am doing a uh, first time ever Green Friday sale where I put up my landscape classes um, so you get a 25% discount on those but more even more important to me is that 25% of the um, what what comes in from the purchase will also go to the world's trees trees in the world <laughs> I gotta check up on the real name on, on that but 
I'll put a link for the Green Friday here below so you can check it out. It's of course from 20, April, uh, November 24th and all the way to Tuesday, Giving Tuesday. So you have a few days to go about it. This one is kind of a branch that goes out in a lot of, of um, well, nothing really. This one has just a little bit there, goes out here. And then we have that one going up here, ending somewhere like that. And then we have one that is turning that way. Actually one up here as well, kind of going that way. So this is our basic shape. And there's of course a ground there. So I'm going to put in watercolor first. And um, I'm actually going to do it a little bit different than usual. I am going to start with water, quite a lot of it. Just spritzing it here um, on the paper. And that means there's quite a lot of water and it will dilute quite a lot of the paint. So we will need to do a second wash probably, but let's see how it turns out first. So now we have quite a lot of water on it. I'll load my brush with a Yuga brush. And look at that. So beautiful. And you can just drip in the paint or splatter it on. I like to do a mix. And then you're just going to add paint where you can see there would be uh, flower. Oh, not flowers. <laughs> Way too used to getting to painting flowers. Um, where there would be petals or leaves. You're just going to add as much as you feel like you need here. And now I'm going to switch to an orange. This is a Sienna, um, Quinacridone Sienna. Look at that, how it's playing with the colors. It's really, really beautiful. Just tapping quite a lot. And you do get messy, but that is okay. We are artists, after all. We can be messy and uh, just have fun with it. I think this looks really, really cool. I'm just going to add a bit more yellow. Imagine when we're doing the line work afterwards. That is really, 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 really cool. A bit more of that here. And that is it. Now I'm going to dry it a little bit, but leave it a little bit wet as well. I'm gonna show you why in a second. But first I'm gonna take a hairdryer and dry it and I will come back to you. Now I've uh, dried it for uh, some minutes and I found my water spray. Hopefully there's enough in it. So we are gonna make it kind of um, fly. You know, wind in uh, autumn will make, make it fly a little bit. All the, the petals and stuff so we can just kind of give it a bit of motion here and the reason why we didn't do this at first was that I wanted some of them to settle but now we can uh, put it down and actually I think I'm gonna let it dry at an angle so just putting something here below yeah, I just want to let it dry like this I want this to be the flow direction. So I'll put this under here and we can uh, come back to it in a second. Now we have it completely dry and it's still looking very sketchy, but don't worry, it will be much better. You can see the paper is warping quite a bit. When you're doing this at home, you might wanna tape it down uh, to something so it's not warping 
just as much. But I didn't think of that when I started the sketch. Well, what can you do? I am going to take my 01 fine liner and just add some, some um, branches here where I feel there might be a branch. And I'm going to follow the initial ones I've done here, but kind of stopping when I get to a point where I feel like there might be other branches or leaves. Um, that can go in here. You might, there might be some kind of end to a branch there. And I had something going up here. And if something is confusing, we can always add leaves and kind of make it more cohesive looking. Um, let's see. Branch here. I'll make some leaves right here. Um, and we can always add more lines, of course. And we've kind of established the main branches here. can see how all these small, almost clouds of paint can become clouders of, uh, of leaves. And then of course at some point we will erase our pencil line and hopefully have something really, really cool. But I think I'm gonna stop here. And again, we can always add more and we are going to add more, but this is kind of the main thing here. And this is looking a little bit annoying, but that is okay right now. I'll be adding some more paint now. So just using my small brush this time, loading it with the yellow again. And then we're going to use a wet on dry technique. So just adding the paint directly on the paper here. And this will give us also just adding in some of the, the both the, the yellow and the, the sienna to give us uh, the same colors as before. You can paint on top of these, but also wherever you feel like you could need a boost of color and and um, value because this is very light. And by giving it all this extra layer here, we add value and extra color and um, more detail. And you can see how it really makes it pop uh, quite a lot more. Just holding it so it's not warping too much. And then just paint around your the the sketched branches so you don't have a fine liner line showing through um, the leaves because that would probably look a, a little bit strange. If I can do something about this here, um, I think it's because my values are a bit too strong in that area. But maybe we just can we can break it up a little bit like that, and then maybe add some more branch things up here, and this, that will probably work. Just add a bit more. Here. You can see I'm holding my 
brush extremely high here because we just want it to be loose and um, quick. Again, working around fine liner lines, switching between the yellow and The new uh, the Sienna, and kind of just looking around to see if I could add more in places. And this is looking really bare at the moment, but we will add some dark to that as well. I'm gonna put in some Van Dyke brown, and that means I'm gonna put it in here as well to just let the colors. Of course, give it some some shadow, but also make the colors look like they belong together. Um, yes, so now I'll add some of that. Not everywhere, but in enough to see that this trunk also has a color. And you can always add more. I like to use a really granulating color for this because it gives us a lot more interesting look than just a um, completely normal without any grains. But it's totally up to you. Granulation can also be a little bit challenging. But I think it's really fun, especially in landscape paintings. And I love how landscape paintings and like this um, is just it can be so loose and relaxing and you can just instead of trying to capture every detail you just capture the soul of a place and that is incredible or a scene and uh, I absolutely love that. There we go. And I'm going to add a tiny bit more color here. And you can see how the yellow has kind of flown in there. That is really pretty. And now I'm going to dry it one more time. And we can add a final uh, bit of detail to with fine, fine liner. So one more time with the, the hairdryer and we can finish up. Now it's dry again. And we can go in and add a few more details. First, I want to add some texture to this. Um, and here I'm just going to do some marks here. We have bark texture on a tree like this. And just some random marks here will show us that texture. Um, quite a bit more. Just adding a little bit darker here below where the branches kind of meet. Do that here as well. Over here. this branch as well. And then we can think about adding uh, a few more smaller branches. So kind of seeing where we could maybe put a few branches that would just peek through in different areas like that. This will give us some, some a bit more detail, but also some more texture in our sketch. You can even have some that is peeking out on the other side of uh, of these smaller cloud clouds clouds. Uh, you know what I think. You know what I mean. Hopefully. 
<laughs> you know what I mean. Clusters of leaves. Just putting in some branches here and there. And especially the ones that we kind of painted afterwards can benefit for from a branch because they are a lot more in front than the first wash we did. So you can just kind of work your way around to see if you need anything. And you don't need to attach it all, for example, I'm not going to put anything on that, this, but a little bit here and there will really just enhance it a lot. And you can see how much it already did. I'm not going to put any more detail into the, into the, um, the um, rest of the tree here, but I'm going to put in a few texture here just to show the, a bit of the ground, with a few grasses and stuff, maybe a few rocks just to set the scene um, a bit more here, a bit more shadow. Okay, that's some really rough, rough grasses that. Um, but I think that is it. An autumn tree in line and wash. I hope you got to sketch some beautiful, uh, beautiful trees. And if you haven't sketched along while watching it, then uh, I really encourage you to go grab some paper and pens and pencils and watercolor and just get started because it's super fun. And uh, I really, really enjoy making uh, trees like this. It's so much fun. And of course, if you want to check out my landscape courses, then uh, check out the link here below. They are at 25% discount right now because of Green Friday. And 25% of the sale will be donated directly to WWF, the Panda organization. So we can do something really, really good for our creative practice and also for nature which is, of course, one of our biggest inspirations, at least here uh, on my chan uh, channel. So I hope you will join me in that. And of course, if you have any questions, just uh, ask them here below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Uh, Green Friday runs from today, November 23rd, and all the way to November 28th. Um, so uh, you have a couple of days to, to join. And there's three courses you can Grab one, two or three. There's a, a landscape, one landscapes course that's kind of a big one covering everything. And then there's two smaller ones. One where you learn how to use a plastic card for painting. And I am painting a tree with that. And you can use that technique to use in a lot of landscapes as well. And another one where I use salt and show you how you can use salt in a beautiful more close-up landscape, uh, which is absolutely stunning. I, have, I so love that project too. So check them out if you uh, wanna go grab some landscapes. It's so much fun. And uh, I'm gonna go inside because it's freezing. It's so, so windy today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you around.